the way the implied cloud works is that uh, we call it bring your own VPC. Um, implied cloud is currently uh, available uh, only within AWS. Uh, so you set up an AWS VPC and you link it to the imply management VPC. Uh, and what you then get is an, in, an interface to our console, which I'll be demoing very shortly uh, right here. And inside of this uh, interface, you can then uh, spin up clusters. When you spin up a cluster, it will be spun up in your VPC. And it will look basically the same as what um, the, uh, basically the same architecture as what uh, we, I was just showing for the on-prem thing. And it's gonna run completely in your servers, and this is very important to us. You own the data, you own the servers, and uh, you can, if you configure the right instance permission roles, you can SSH into them, uh, play around with them however you want. Uh, obviously, you, if you make some changes, like our management service might potentially like uh, stomp over those changes. So we also provide an interface for you to uh, configure what changes you wanna make from our, our UI. For example, you can load your own custom extensions. Uh, this is something, a, a strength of Druid is that you can extend it however you want. Uh, and we let you configure which extensions you wanna load from your own S3 buckets. For deep storage, we will use S3 and we'll spin up an RDS for you as the metadata store. And then we'll make sure that these clusters are optimally connected. Uh, not only that, but when we spin up this cluster, uh, we make sure that, for example, all of these links are TLS encrypted and the deep storage is encrypted and the, and the RDS is encrypted. So uh, we don't just spin up like a random cluster, we kind of spin up uh, what I would call the gold standard cluster. It's basically um, all the bells and whistles that, that, you, that you need. And uh, I talked about this for quite a bit and I think it's about time to show a demo of how all of this kind of connects together and what, what does this actually look like. Uh, so, uh, all right, let's, I'm gonna go to uh, uh, like our cloud, uh, the imply.io, and this is implies demo account inside of our own cloud. So this is me logging in as a cloud customer, and this is what you would see if you were a cloud customer. Uh, I have a lot of clusters configured here, and a lot of them are in a stopped state. Uh, so this is actually very useful. I can stop a cluster, save all the configuration for it, have no nothing on my bill, uh, because nothing is actually running, but at any point be able to recreate that cluster with exactly the same configuration, and it will remount the same deep storage, meaning that uh, it will reload all the segments that it was serving. I have two clusters that are running, and uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new cluster. So um, if I wanted to spin up a new cluster, which would be the first thing I would do, you know, when I come into this for the first time, I would have nothing here, uh, this would just say, please go spin up a new cluster. Uh, I, I go here and all I have to do is really provide a cluster name. So um, uh, I'll demo and then select a version from uh, one of the uh, versions. I'm gonna just pick the latest. And then all I have to do is really just pick what instances I want. Uh, in this case, because I'm gonna spin up this cluster, but I'm probably gonna not really do much with it. I'll shut it down shortly after. Uh, I'm gonna choose pretty small instances uh, just because I wanna avoid, uh, I'm not even gonna make it highly available, which means that this cluster won't support rolling updates, but that's okay because I will show a rolling update in a different cluster. Uh, after I selected all my instances, I could just go ahead and do create cluster. Um, and before I do that, I wanna just show off the advanced config uh, because what this allows you to do, like one of our thing, one of the things we're really passionate about is that you are running this infrastructure, uh, you have full control of it, over it. So I could provide a key pair name if I wanted to SSH into it, if I wanted to load some custom files onto the cluster for some reason for my extensions, that would work. Uh, I could fuss around with the encryption and um, uh, I can even override the uh, configurations of each individual node directly. Uh, obviously, uh, based on the instance types, the 
uh, ideal configurations would be pushed out to the nodes. But if there is something I want to try out, maybe some experimental feature, maybe some extension that you're providing needs some, some of its own configuration, you can, you can override it here. I'm going to go ahead and create this cluster now. So I'm going to confirm this. And this will submit a request. And uh, this cluster cloud demo is now starting. And uh, it's just going to spin here for for a while, provision all the resources, and within uh, 10 or 15 minutes, this cluster will be up and running. And uh, all along the, the way, you will be able to see uh, what's actually going on. So um, there's uh, some cloud formation requests that were submitted. And slowly, it will kind of work through that. It will build a plan, and then it will show, show me what the plan is. And once that cluster is spun up, I can start using it. Uh, this is by far the easiest. Uh, way to spin up a Druid cluster that I know of. Uh, I mean, I kind of showed off a, a few more things, but if I wanted to really be aggressive about it, I could have just clicked start cluster without configuring anything and I would have gotten a cluster. So um, I, I always say it's, it's quite a few clicks less than ordering Grubhub. So um, uh, take that Grubhub. Uh, and um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Let's see, another thing that, that you can do pretty easily while that cluster is spinning up is I have a cluster here, it's running, it's nightly, it's running on a version that is slightly out of date. Uh, we don't use this cluster very much, but um, let's, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna manage it. Uh, so I can go here, I can go to the setup screen and I can see, okay, wow, I have um, uh, like, you know, this is a pretty small cluster. It's actually not a highly available cluster, so I will not be able to perform a rolling update on it, uh, but I will be able to still upgrade this version. And I'm gonna apply changes. And in this case, uh, because this cluster isn't highly available, uh, because of the configuration I chose, I'm gonna say, well, a uh, cluster will, will be upgraded to inversion, but it will be restarted in the process. Uh, similarly, I have another cluster here. Uh, it's the stable cluster, and uh, it is running the latest implied version. I can go in here, and I can uh, uh, manage this cluster, and I could maybe downgrade it. And if I was to downgrade this cluster, um, I would be able to apply this without any service interruptions because it is configured to run in a highly available way. Specifically, it has uh, three master servers, because, so one of them can be taken down offline um, at any point. Um, I'll just quickly show off the, the other parts of this uh, interface right here. So uh, one important bit that you, uh, oh, let's discard these changes. Uh, so I, I actually, you know, can see the, the specific servers that are running. And by the way, as I mentioned, uh, one of the things that is very useful to do with Druid, especially when you're managing lots of historical data, is to have multiple tiers. Um, and uh, right here, I can say, oh, I want like uh, three tiers and uh, configure, different, f f configure different machines and different number of machines for different tiers, and then later go in and reassign which, what, what segments of like what timeline of what data source is are stored and what tier and kind of monitor uh, to make sure that uh, that assignment perform is performed correctly. Um, so uh, I'm going to discard these changes. And um, another thing that you, you get here, uh, this is kind of, you get this with imply is you get uh, our interactive exploratory app uh, built in and ready to go. Uh, you can access it by just clicking open here. Open is a uh, opening this cluster and uh, letting you kind of play around with the, the data visualization app. Uh, so uh, right here, I could, this cluster is running and I can, I, I can uh, drag some dimensions in and uh, uh, perform very immediate uh, interactive queries. Uh, I can start building dashboards and I can share this out to all of my users. Um, now, uh, this has been automatically provisioned and configured to talk to, to this cluster. Uh, obviously, you might also want to be able to interface with this cluster by yourself. And for that, we provide an API, uh, which you can uh, access through the API screen that I was showing before. 
Um, another thing that you can do here is you can actually load some new data. So we have a uh, data loading flow. So, um, you know, if I point it to some data, in this case, this data is in HTTP, uh, in an HTTPS server, uh, I can sample it and get a sample of my data and then help uh, build a schema on top of that. And Druid has a high level schema that it uses. It needs to know what your time column is so it can partition the data correctly. Uh, and this will help me configure that. It will also tell me if I have roll up or not. Um, and uh, uh, I could, you know, set up automatic compaction uh, and kind of start ingesting, like review the configuration for this and then start loading this data straight away. Um, so this is the idea that you can kind of, with Imply Cloud, get started, spin up a Druid cluster, wait for a bit uh, for it to spin up, have everything provisioned perfectly with all of the uh, security that you could want uh, kind of by default out of the box, and then start loading data and playing with it all within a span of a few minutes. Um, going back to the cloud interface, um, I'm going to manage this cluster here. Um, I can also um, uh, access the underlying Druid console of this cluster. So again, if I want to dive deep and, and look at the, you know, the segments within this cluster or uh, the, the current tasks that are running, that's that task I just submitted, uh, or the data servers, everything is available for you here. And uh, you can configure uh, the dynamic properties of the cluster, the lookups, uh, like kind of everything is wired in and the security for this, the access to this uh, interface is controlled by a set of permissions. So uh, in your, uh, uh, in your uh, environment, you will set up a set of roles with a set of permissions of who can access what, whether people can manage the cluster. In this case, I have uh, super access permissions so I can kind of see and manage everything. Um, and uh, uh, last but not least, is we also uh, automatically hook this cluster up to Clarity, which is our monitoring solution. So here I can basically go in and see, okay, uh, what queries are happening on this cluster right now? Uh, and uh, in this case, I see that uh, like I've been querying the Wikipedia data source and uh, I can, uh, in this case, the, the queries are pretty trivial. This cluster doesn't get a lot of usage, but, um, uh, definitely uh, is something that um, uh, is useful to be able to monitor and diagnose the performance of a cluster. Um, and uh, I guess, uh, lastly, uh, uh, we can go back and we can see uh, how that cluster I was creating is doing. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, look at this cluster and I'm going to see that it's still creating. Uh, it has a few more messages here. Uh, and uh, the biggest thing it's going to wait for is the creation of the RDS inst instance. And then once that is configured, that cluster will be fully usable. So uh, probably by the time we get to the end of the question and answer section of this webinar, this will be up and running. Um, right. And uh, most importantly is like, even if our cluster is updating, even if uh, since this nightly cluster is updating, I can still monitor uh, it because Clarity is something that we host. We kind of collect the metrics for, for this cluster and we, we let you access them uh, as much as you want. So uh, if I uh, monitor this cluster, I have the, the information for, for this cluster. I see my, my spike in Wikipedia traffic here and I can see what queries have been making and also uh, how the ingestion was behaving and uh, what uh, uh, the server performance were, as well as any exceptions that were logged. Um, so this provides a, oh, uh, and meanwhile, uh, this cluster that is currently doing a rolling update, it's showing me uh, there is an update in progress. I can see and kind of have an audit trail of all the uh, changes that, that have been happening. So in this case, I asked to upgrade from 291 to 297, and at the same time, um, I can see that I have an update in progress that uh, uh, I can see what is the set of steps it's going to take. Uh, so I understand like, what it's doing. So it's trying to be as transparent as possible about the operations. And at the end of the day, you host the, the, the 
um, the information is stored on your VPC and you have full access and full control over it. Uh, all of what I'm showing you here is just lots of nice to have tools to make your DevOps life easy and to let you focus on what's really important, which is loading your data and making sure that you can surface the data and actually help your digital business with uh, the data you're collecting, not uh, futzing around setting up uh, the encryption on a Druid cluster, have that handled by the service.